Is Kaspersky antivirus dangerous? This is a question that many are asking after the Federal Communications Commission or the FCC added Kaspersky to the US national security blacklist. This is in lieu of the ongoing war in Ukraine where there are many concerns of a potential Russian cyber attack beyond the borders of Ukraine to either West or even the United States. And for the record on March 25th, it was not just Kaspersky that got added to this blacklist. It also included China Mobile and China Telecom. They join a list that also includes Huawei, ZTE, among others. So is Kaspersky antivirus actually dangerous or is it just collateral damage in the mounting tensions between the United States and Russia? Let's take a look at this. And let's really pay attention to the language used in the announcement by the FCC. The word used in the announcement that I think we should all be paying attention to right now in this specific case is espionage. We should also pay attention to the like button because we like videos that help us learn things and we're gonna learn some things in this video. So keep the word espionage in the back of your mind because we will be talking about that. Now looking at Kaspersky antivirus, it comes with all the general bells and whistles that you would expect out of a normal antivirus software. In fact, it is used by a number of large US companies such as Microsoft, IBM, and Intel. At least they were listed on the Kaspersky website. I'm sure that that's probably changed in lieu of the sanctions, the war, this addition to the national security blacklist, and other reasons. But there is an outline that I'll have linked in the description from cyber news that basically dives into the antivirus solution itself and basically all it says is that Kaspersky antivirus from an antivirus solution standpoint is actually comparable to other market solutions however as they outline there and as I want to talk about in this video the word that we want to be thinking about is espionage so we're not necessarily looking at whether Kaspersky will be able to catch the most recent versions of malware or not we need to look at the company itself and its relationship with the Russian government and so to understand that concern, let's zoom out a little bit. Kaspersky being one of the largest companies in Russia, at least certainly one of the largest tech companies and cybersecurity companies in Russia, is not a stranger to the Russian government. In 2017, Kaspersky was accused of stealing secrets from the computer of an NSA contractor. It wasn't long after that scandal that Israeli intelligence uncovered a large espionage operation that Kaspersky was being used for. Now I want to think about all of that and then pause for a moment to think about exactly why an antivirus solution is the perfect Trojan horse for espionage. When you scan your computer for malware, you are giving your antivirus solution permission to access all the files and all the different file systems in your computer. And in doing so, it is trying to analyze whether or not a file is malware or not. To do that, it's going to do a couple things. It will probably check the file metadata to see if the metadata matches any known malware. But for deeper inspections, it might actually check the contents of the files themselves. They can scan for anything from indicators that are being distributed to antivirus solutions to other things like a call out in code to a command and control server or some string of obfuscated code. In the case of this contractor, Kaspersky flagged a file as malware, but instead of deleting the file off the computer, it instead took the file and passed it on to Russian intelligence services. In doing so, it violated the trust that we all put in our antivirus solutions to do the right thing and just delete malware from our computers. And of course, in this case, it became an incident in international relations. So I bring all that up to say that the accusations against Kaspersky are not without merit or a record, and that Kaspersky is uniquely positioned both in the cybersecurity industry and from a software perspective to gain specific and elevated levels of trust and that grants it access and that access and trust can be weaponized. Again, oftentimes hackers are trying to exploit vulnerabilities, but in this case, Kaspersky being able to enumerate a file system, that's just a feature, which really is the holy grail of exploit development. So what does this newfound status mean for companies that are working with Kaspersky? Well, to be frank, if you want to continue to work with you US government, you should probably have found a new antivirus software yesterday. That being said, I wouldn't be shocked if most contractors and other large organizations that work with the government were not given some sort of advance notice that this was coming down the pipe so they could basically make that transition to a new provider ahead of time to avoid any kind of disruption of services to the government or any of the other major services that are being provided. And as for personal use, if you're just a normal human consumer, 
I'd certainly recommend finding another solution, but hey, you do you. To help with this video and this research, I asked InfoSec Twitter what they thought and if they would recommend continuing to use Kaspersky in lieu of other similar market options. And th at least thus far, as of the moment of this recording, the answer has been a unanimous no. So it's an imperfect poll because it's still Twitter, but take that for what it's worth. So I'm gonna leave this information with you and I'm gonna let you make an informed and good and solid and calculated decision for yourself. Because because I respect your ability to make a good, thoughtful, calculated decision. I'm sure that I will not be disappointed in trusting you. With, with all of this being said, there is a whole rabbit hole that you can dive down on the relationship between national security and cybersecurity, and you can check all of that out in this video right here. Also, be sure to subscribe for more videos and information like this, and drop a comment on your thoughts on cyber espionage. With all that, until next time.